have a special knack for finding things. When I did a whole 12 weeks of discovering what I wanted to do, the thing at the top of my list was treasure hunting and finding things. Some of the nicknames that uh, come about is muscler uh, and muscle grubber. Uh, I think uh, more technically it could be called amateur malacologist. Sometimes we call it polywogging, sometimes we call it grubbing, and you're just trying to go on this treasure hunt for, for finding freshwater mussels. So today we're out here to um, do some freshwater mussel surveys. We're trying to find out how many mussels are living in the San upper Sangamon River and working to uh, better understand how the mussels are growing and how their populations are doing here. My experience doing the mussel surveys is new. I started this year and went to all four events. It was a blast. Coming out here on my first day, I was not sure what to expect. I was laughing almost the whole time and deep in the silt and the rocks trying to get mussels and initially I just thought I'm gonna find some mussels in the water and bring them back so that other people can do all of the processing and categorization of them but I was able to be involved in that process which was really exciting for me. I also learned about different mussels. I guess I didn't really come with any kind of expectation that there would be a specific kind, but there were so many more than I could have anticipated. It's important to study freshwater mussels because they can help um, us determine if our water is healthy, if our waterways are healthy or rivers, then uh, we're going to have healthy people. When we kind of connect those dots of healthy, healthy animals in the river, a healthy river, then we can have healthy people. At this site in particular, we have um, a lot of really cool mussels. One of the things that we've also found here is um, some of the more rare mussels, and one of those being the monkey face. Currently, it's a state-threatened species, and we had a couple other rare species, like the fluted shell that was found. We don't find too many of those. The other th neat thing too about this site is there are a lot of mussels and so we've got a nice bed essentially. A lot of times mussels are really patchy but they're just found throughout this, this section of the river here. That tells us that these animals are happy, <laughs> that they're able to, to thrive here. The first mussel that I found was a pimpleback. I was very excited because it took a while to find, and I was so focused on finding one, and I did, yeah. One of the goals of citizen science with the Upper Sangamon River Conservancy is to offer opportunities to young people who might then take that enthusiasm that they have out here for the, the surveys into a, a more long-term goal of theirs. And the citizen science works very well for both getting uh, precise information that we needed about the mussels and allowing great opportunities for citizen scientists of all ages and experience to be able to make meaningful contribution to science. In this particular survey, we had had scouts out and they pulled up a super rare mussel we have now in Illinois called the Spike. It's state endangered. The last record that we had had live for the Sangamon River Basin was in 1991. And then in 2022, a live individual that was fairly young looked healthy and that was just a fantastic record. Being able to see that helps me think of you know future ideas. One of the great things about citizen science is that anyone can participate. Um, just in this month so far, we've had volunteers who are five years old. We've had volunteers in their 70s. We've had volunteers who are legally blind. 
you can't usually see the mussels anyway, you're using your hands to find them. So being blind wasn't necessarily a hindrance to participating in this citizen science project. And we also have a lot of diversity of, of backgrounds. You know, we have people with different educational backgrounds, different racial backgrounds, different aspects of human diversity are being well represented in our quest to understand the muscle diversity. One of my biggest passions is to bring people outside. Um, and in particular, black and brown people outside and make it less scary of a experience and a really exciting opportunity. So I think that citizen science does that inherently where you're able to come out, things are structured, you learn about what things are, what things to look out for, and then you are in it. I think if someone is feeling nervous to come out and participate, it's totally understandable and no need. You can always leave if it's not for you. For me, I would just say, do it, try it. Try something new, go for it.